Hey everyone, welcome to Learn ArcViz YouTube channel. Make sure to like this video and subscribe if you're into ArcViz and you want to get more free content regarding ArcViz, including my free giveaways, my discounts for courses, all that kind of stuff. Keeps me going, keeps me making content, keeps me making videos. So this video is all about free V-Ray assets that are now available to V-Ray users. And they don't cost extra or anything like that. It's just if you have V-Ray, the latest versions, then it comes with a ton of free content that maybe you don't know about. So I'm going to go over these things and how to use them. And if you have your V-Ray toolbar open, there are these ones up here. The V-Ray material library browser. This one's been around a little longer. And then also the Cosmos browser, which is with the newest versions of V-Ray. So the material library is pretty straightforward. You open it and you have access to all these awesome materials. And of course, because they're made by Chaos Group and V-Ray, they're made to work with V-Ray, they work extremely well. Okay, so there's, and there's not really much to using them. If we just put a sphere in here. So all you, you can see it's all categorized over here. So let's do bricks. And we'll go to this ceramic tile looking thing here. Now, all you really have to do is make sure you've got the right settings up here. These are filters to organize them and how to sort them. Open ME on apply. That means open the material editor. This is re use real world scale. If you watch any of my videos, you know I always use real world scale because you can update universally throughout your scene the size of the tiling. Use triplanar mapping and add to library. Yeah, that's about it. So if the if this is open already, I mean all these settings are basically self-explanatory. Let's make sure our render engine is on V-Ray. Yes, V-Ray 5 update 1.3 is what I'm working with right now. So you can you can take this and if you have a slot selected over here, you can say add to scene and it will pop over here. Okay. Now if you look at it, very nice looking material. You can also select here on the object that you want and say apply to selected object. Okay, the only thing that I don't like about it is that it doesn't automatically, and this isn't the right material anymore, we'd have to sample this material off of the object. The only thing I don't like about it, and it's really the only thing that I adjust, is that it doesn't show the map automatically in the viewport. So if you click in the map and then click show shaded material in viewport it now does and if we put a simple real world real world map on this it now looks correct right okay now a couple other things to know it automatically uses a v-ray bitmap you can't view the image because it's a tx file so it's like a proprietary file so these aren't things you can just like open up in photoshop and adjust the mapping source is using the V-Ray UVW randomizer, which is actually a super cool tool. Maybe you don't know about this either. But with a V-Ray bitmap, you can actually map the mapping source. And this is better to look at in the slate editor. Okay, so if we grab this material here, you'll see how it's kind of laid out. So for the diffuse, it has a V-Ray bitmap, which is like a regular bitmap, except it can handle HDRIs and things like that. It has some special things about it, but otherwise works like a regular bitmap. But for the mapping source, we usually have mapping coordinates here on a standard bitmap. On they're, they're the same as this down here. So the V-Ray bitmap has them as well. And you could set this to be all real world and everything like that and map it to the size you want. But there's also a map now for the mapping source. So you can see that the mapping is actually being controlled by this thing out here. So this can be a randomizer. So it can be random by render ID, by face ID, by element. Okay, so you can actually create an object with a bunch of different elements and each one of those elements will be mapped differently using this V-Ray randomizer. But in the V-Ray randomizer, you can change things. You can see there's not really much randomization going on here. You could make it so that there was though, you have full control over it. But down here you are setting the the standard mapping. So the real world scale, it's set to three foot three for one tile. So that's why all we have to do is put a real world map on here and it's working. 
Now, the cool thing about this map is it's controlling all of these because the mapping source for the bump map is also going to here. And this one, oops, don't want to do that. This one is, this, which map is this? This is the reflect map. Yep. And it is also being mapped here. So instead of the olden days where we had to update the mapping for every single map, which is always a huge pain, we can now just map it to one source and it will update for all the maps. Now that is my preferred workflow at this point. And it's a little bit newer way to do things because V-Ray has been actually upgrading. When they release a new version, they offer new features like this, which are great. So depending on which one you're used to, you may or may not know about this workflow. But that is the workflow, workflow that is default with these materials that come in the V-Ray material library. Okay, so as long as you know how to use these, you have access to all these. And also as long as you loaded them or downloaded them when you installed V-Ray. Okay, great materials. They work straight out of the box and they're really, really useful. Okay, so that's one thing that V-Ray offers that makes the workflow and the user friendliness of V-Ray great. Okay, now there's an another thing, the V-Ray Cosmos browser, which is also fantastic. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know I recommend a lot of the, for example, the design connected models because I think they're extremely high quality, right? Well, this browser actually has a bunch of those models and it gives them away for free. And not only that, but this browser, you can just, it's so easy to just drag and drop into here and it comes in exactly how you want it. All the materials are high quality and linked properly. It automatically proxies things that you would want proxied because they're super high poly. It just works the way you want it to work. Now I have one big beef with it and we'll talk about that in a minute, but let's just look at how it works. So here's the list of creators, 3D people. Okay, these people, you probably know if you work in ArcViz a lot that getting 3D people to look good is very hard, but 3D people actually make some that work quite well. And here they are, a bunch of them for free. So you can scroll through them all. AXYZ Design, same thing. They make very high quality people. And these aren't the cheap crappy ones. They have some of those too, but these are these are really nice and they will hold up in a rendering quite well. Okay, like I said, Design Connected is one of the contributors to this. And there's just a lot of kind of knickknacks and decor that is available through Design Connected including full furniture and things like that. I mean, look at all this stuff. This stuff is super, super high quality, like as high quality of assets as you can get on the internet. And here it is available within V-Ray. Pretty awesome. Okay, so you can see there's a bunch more too. So that's all great. But it's also categorized here. Oh, and then HDRIs. I always recommend HDRIs from No Emotion HDRIs, right? And... Cool thing now, right in this bright browser, you don't even have to go and download these anymore. They're just they're just here, and it's browsing them, and you can just you know download them. Boom, no emotions. Great HDRIs, and they're free. You can get them online too for free. But this just makes it so much easier. Okay, so there's if you go to the home page. Well, first of all, you set it up by going here, going to settings, and then setting a a download path to where these are going to be downloaded. Now, I said there's one major flaw with this, and that is that you cannot link that to a network drive. Why that is, I don't know, but it drives me crazy because I work with a team of artists, and we need to have our assets in one place on a network drive at all times because if someone else opens my file, it needs to reference back to the network and find all my maps and all those things. So anyone who works in a team knows what I'm talking about. That stuff needs to be in a set place and never move. The way that this is, because you cannot download to a network drive, it downloads to a local drive, which means when someone else opens my file on another computer, all the maps will go missing. Okay, so this is a major flaw of this thing, but I have read on their website, in their forums, that they are working on that aspect of it. There are some workarounds now, none of them are easy or fun to do. They would include like archiving your whole scene 
and sending it to someone else so that they can then open it and work on it. Okay, that's not an easy and fast thing to do. So personally, I really look forward to the day when you can just map this to a network drive and it just works across all computers. That will be fantastic because these assets are really, really good. Okay, that said, on the home page, you can see all the different things that we have. So you can browse by space, you can browse by category. So, I mean, it's really awesome. There's actually a bunch of nice trees. These trees are excellent. You know, they're top quality stuff and totally available here. Go back to home. The people I already showed you are good. The vehicles are really good too. Okay, so it used to be, back in the day, you used to have to buy for several hundreds of dollars probably libraries of these kind of things, right? You buy a car library for 200 bucks maybe and you get 12 cars. This is a lot more than 12 cars and it's just coming with V-Ray. Fantastic. And then the same thing would go for people, furniture, any of that stuff. Okay, but it's all here and there's there's enough variety that it's quite useful, I find. It's not gonna have everything and that's why I teach classes about how to model your own custom stuff because sometimes you just will need to do that. But if you're just trying to quickly fill a scene, this is a really good, fast, easy way to do it. So let's just look at how it works. I mean, you can just download this. I'm gonna grab this guy here, and then we can just import it into the scene with that button there or this button here. Okay. Let's close that down. Now look at this, it's just here perfectly. Materials applied. It's already a V-Ray proxy. Put it to a bounding box. Show the whole mesh. Okay, it's really, really good. It does all the things that I want to do for my own library, but it saves me the trouble of having to do them, which is such a tedious and annoying process. Okay, so that's great. Now, I mean, you can easily just do... Oh, we want the Cosmos. Let's put an HDRI in here, render it take a look at what this scene looks like and you'll see what kind of assets we're talking about and that's pretty much all there is to it let's bring this guy up again go to home go to HDRIs super nice to have free HDRIs available okay it needs to be downloaded first and of course everything's being downloaded to that folder that we designated and you can import it imports as a V-Ray dome light already set and ready to go move it out of the way here and then we'll just take a little rectangle, turn it into a poly. Let's get one more material in here. And we'll just say, okay, I put a new material on the ground here. Got my brick ball there. Now let's just put a camera in. V-Ray, of course, V-Ray physical camera. And we'll just render it. Okay, so you can see with the HDRI, a camera without any adjustments at all, and textures, models without any adjustments at all. It's a pretty nice result, actually. Okay, so the models are high quality, the materials are high quality, the HDRIs are high quality and everything's just drag and drop. That's a big deal. And that's V-Ray's way, way of competing with some of these real-time renderer type prop, uh, software that comes with all sorts of assets in them, right? V-Ray's now offering us a bunch of assets with really, really high quality photo real objects. So I recommend using them, super easy to use, accessible to everyone that has V-Ray. I think this is a great addition to the V-Ray product and the V-Ray workflow. Let me know if you have questions about this in the comments and yeah, definitely check it out. I think it enhances everybody's scenes in a very quick and easy way and that's a really valuable thing. Make sure to like and subscribe while you're here. Thanks for watching.